The globe is surrounded by a grid of lines measured in degrees and minutes that allow us to define specific points on the surface. Lines of latitude encircle the Earth horizontally, parallel to the equator. In the northern hemisphere, 90 individual degrees of latitude are marked. They start at the equator and proceed upward to the North Pole. The equator is defined as having zero degrees of latitude. 90 degrees of latitude occurs at the North Pole. Perpendicular to the lines of latitude are the lines of longitude. These vertical lines connect the two poles. The starting point for the lines of longitude is Greenwich, England. 180 degrees of longitude proceed east and west, meeting on the opposite side of the globe. There are 360 lines of longitude in total, but of most interest to pilots in the Western Hemisphere are the 180 that march across North America and outward across the Pacific Ocean. Any point on the surface can be referenced by its unique combination of latitude and longitude. Take a look at this grid over the continental United States. It roughly outlines the country. From the bottom up, we've identified three lines of latitude. The lower one appears at 29 degrees. To be more correct, we'd refer to this as 29 degrees north because it's in the northern hemisphere. The next latitude line is shown at 40 degrees, and the one at the top appears at 47 degrees. Just outside of the east coast, we see the 70 degree line of longitude. This one is properly referred to as 70 degrees west because it's in the western hemisphere. Vertically over the center of the country is the line signifying 94 degrees of longitude, and the one along the west coast lies at 124 degrees. Just as an example, if we choose the spot where 40 degrees of latitude and 94 degrees of longitude cross, we zero in on this specific point in the state of Missouri. Okay, that's the basic lat-long layout used on sectional charts. Let's see how it actually works in a close-up view. The sectional portion seen here shows the area near Ardmore, Oklahoma. The latitude and longitude lines form four quadrangles. The line of longitude on the right lies at 97 degrees west, and the line of longitude on the left is at 98 degrees west. A third line of longitude splits the difference between them, so you could say that it lies at 97.5 degrees, but that's not really the way we should describe it. Here's the most important thing for you to remember. One degree of longitude, or latitude, is divided into smaller increments called minutes. There are 60 minutes in one degree. So, the longitudinal line in the middle is located at 97 degrees and 30 minutes. Whether you're talking about lats or longs, on a sectional chart, each line is separated by 30 minutes. Now, looking at the horizontal lines of latitude, we see that the bottom one lies at 34 degrees north. The one at the top lies at 35 degrees north. As before, the distance between the two lines is 1 degree, and that's equal to 60 minutes. The line in the middle is therefore at 34 degrees and 30 minutes. See how that works? Alright, now let's zoom in again and work a test question. What is the latitude and longitude of the Lindsay Airport? To figure this one, we need to first identify the four bounding lines of latitude and longitude. The line of longitude on the left is labeled. It's 98 degrees, and if it's summer, it's likely the temperature, too. The line of latitude at the top is also labeled. It's 35 degrees. So, we have to figure out what the latitude and longitude is for the two remaining lines. Look at the bottom one first. I'm going to talk you through this slowly and see if you can come up with the answer before I do. Okay, we know there are 60 minutes between each degree of latitude. Now let me see. We also said that adjacent lines are 30 minutes apart. The top line of latitude is at 35 degrees and the adjacent line below it must be off by 30 minutes. Now is that 35 degrees plus 30 minutes or is it 35 degrees minus 30 minutes? The key to getting this one right is to remember that latitudes increase as they proceed northward. Knowing that, the line at the bottom must be 30 minutes less than 35 degrees. So the answer is 34 degrees, 30 minutes. Using the same logic, the line to the right of the 98 degree line of longitude must also be 30 minutes less. Remember, lines of longitude increase as they proceed westward. So the line on the right is at 97 degrees, 30 minutes. With the four bordering lines identified, all that's left to do is to draw a lat and a long that go right over the airport. To figure the latitude, count down the tick marks from the 35 degree line. This one looks to be very close to nine minutes. 
So subtract 9 from 60 and we end up with 34 degrees 51 minutes north for the latitude. Doing the same counting for the longitude and we're right about 5 minutes from the 97 degree 30 minute line. Add 5 to 30 and we get 97 degrees 35 minutes west. The figuring we just did for the Lindsay Airport is fine for test questions and probably for most situations in the real world. But in the central U.S., a degree is actually about 70 miles in length and one minute is nearly a mile. You could be half a mile off in the air and still see an airport without any problems. But for more accuracy, we would have to deal with smaller increments, either seconds or tenths of minutes. The AFD shows degrees, minutes, and tenths of minutes. It provides higher resolution in the numbers than we just did by hand. Instead of tenths of minutes, you may someday be confronted with coordinates in seconds. A second is one-sixtieth of a minute. Here are three ways to represent these same numbers. You may at some point have to convert from one format to another, especially when dealing with waypoints in a GPS. Just remember, you can get pretty close by using a sectional, but be prepared for more high-resolution numbers when dealing with other sources.